Welcome back, everybody. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question dealing with velocity. So Adam swims across a river at an angle. The current is 3 kilometers per hour. His resultant velocity is 5.4 kilometers per hour at an angle of 15 degrees with the shore. Part A, what speed can Adam swim at in still water? Part B, what direction does he swim? Part C, how far downstream will he be in 20 minutes? And then part D, if the river is one kilometer wide, how long in minutes will it take Adam to get to the other side? Okay, so lots going on in this question. So part A, what speed can Adam swim at in still water? Well, let's draw this river first. So we got the shores of the river. And then uh, let's say that this way is uh, downstream, so the current is going this way. And then we're told that Adam's going to swim across the river at some kind of angle. So he's not going to go directly across. He's maybe going to go this way or this way. And then what's going to happen is the current is going to shift him a little bit where his resultant velocity is 5.4 kilometers per hour at an angle of 15 degrees with the shore. So let's start off by drawing the resultant velocity. So we know the resultant velocity. It's going to be 15 degrees with the shore like that. And it is 5.4 kilometers per hour. So this is going to be his resultant velocity. And what usually happens? Well, we take the swim, let's call it the swim vector. Then we have the current vector. And then we usually end up getting the resultant vector. So notice that attached to the head of the resultant vector is going to be the head of the current vector. And we know the current is going this way. So we can draw a vector like this for the current. And we're told that the current is 3 kilometers per hour. So uh, if we draw the swimming vector, the vector s, it's going to look something like this. Now, this diagram here assumes that Adam is swimming a little bit to the left of the vertical. But it's very possible that he might swim to the right. So this current vector might be um, shorter. So it could be here as well. But let's just assume it's here. We're going to figure out whether it's shorter or not when we solve for the angles. But thought I would just make a note of that. So notice that this line, the shore, and the current are parallel. And there's a line going through both of them. So we can use the Z pattern to figure out what this angle is. If this is 15 degrees with the shore, the resultant, that means that this is 15 degrees as well. So now notice that we can uh, solve for what Adam's swim speed is, which is going to be the magnitude of this vector. Let's call it vector S. And we can use cosine law to do that because we have the two sides of a triangle and the angle contained within those sides. So the magnitude of this vector squared is going to be 3 squared plus 5.4 squared minus 2 times 3 times 5.4 times cos of 15. And when you solve for that magnitude, you end up getting 2.62 kilometers per hour. So that is the answer to part A, 2.62 kilometers per hour. And then part B asks, what direction does he swim? So we can figure out this direction here. Let's solve for this theta in the triangle. So notice we can use cosine law. So sine theta over 3 equals sine 15 over the magnitude of that vector, which is 2.62. So sine 15 over 2.62.
So sine theta is basically 3 times sine of 15 all over 2.62. And then we can solve for that theta. And when you solve for that theta, you end up getting 17.2 degrees. So this angle here is 17.2 degrees. But notice if this is 17.2 degrees, this diagram doesn't really make sense because 15 plus 17.2, that's 32.2 degrees. And notice that the way we drew it with this vector sort of going to the left, this angle should be greater than 90 degrees technically, right? And that's what I was saying before, that it's, there's a potential that this vector is not actually going to the left, but it's actually going to be going to the right a bit. And that's actually what happened, and we were able to tell by solving for that degree. So the way the diagram actually looks is like this. Now you couldn't know that for sure just by looking at the numbers, but once you start solving more and more, you get a more accurate diagram. But you can have questions easily where the vector would be here. And then that resultant or that current would take you to the resultant here. But in this case, Adam is actually swimming a little bit to the right of that vertical. So this here is uh, 17. Kind of don't have too much room there. So that is 17.2 degrees. All right? Does that make sense? So what direction does he swim at? Well, we can state his direction relative to the shore. So it's 15 degrees plus that 17.2 degrees, which is 32.2 degrees. So the direction that he swims at is, um, where should we write this? Let's maybe write it down here. 32.2 degrees relative to shore like that. All right, so that there is your answer to part B. That's your uh, answer to part A. Okay, part C. How far downstream will he be in 20 minutes? So this question is a little bit more difficult. So what they're asking is from here, Adam is going to be swimming along this line, along that resultant. Well, how far downstream is he going to be in 20 minutes? So notice that we can figure out how far he swims in 20 minutes along this line here, along that resultant, because we're told what the speed is. So we know distance equals speed times time. So the distance he's going to swim in 20 minutes is going to be 5.4 kilometers per hour. But notice that we are given the time in minutes versus the speed is kilometers per hour. So we either have to change the speed to have minutes in it or we have to change this time to have hours in it. And I feel like it's easier to just change this time to hours. 20 minutes is what? That's one third of an hour. If we take 20 minutes, multiply it by one hour having 60 minutes, 20 over 60, that gives us one over three hours. The minutes here will cancel out. So the time here is one over three hours. So 5.4 times one over three, that would give us what? 1.8, I believe. 1.8 kilometers. Right, so that's the distance along this line that Adam swims at in 20 minutes. So notice that we can make another triangle here. 
and we're going to make a distance triangle. So drawing this triangle again, so we have the shore here, and then let's just draw this uh, vector here. So Adam is swimming this way. This is still 15 degrees. And this is a distance triangle. Notice how all of these are speeds, 3 kilometers per hour, 5.4 uh, kilometers per hour. Well, this is going to be in distance, so it's going to be 1.8 kilometers. So when they ask you how far downstream will he be in 20 minutes, he started here. Well, how far downstream was that horizontal distance going to be? Now, also be careful. If we redraw this triangle, it would be something like this, right? Maybe a little bit more slanted. Be careful not to solve for this side here because this side doesn't represent that full downstream distance because this, if we bring it down, it's actually gonna be starting here, but we need it from the starting point to here. So you actually have to draw a new triangle where all you're drawing is the distance that Adam swims at here, and then you're just drawing a vertical line straight down, and you're solving for this side, where he started to, to that downstream distance, that horizontal distance to where he's at in 20 minutes. This is the point at which he's gonna be at in 20 minutes. So you're solving for x, and this is a right angle triangle. So notice that you can use cos to solve for x. So we can say cos 15 equals x over 1.8. So x is basically equal to 1.8 times cos of 15. And when you multiply those, you end up getting 1.74 kilometers. So that represents how far downstream he's going to be, 1.74 kilometers. All right, and then uh, part D, if the river is one kilometer wide, how long in minutes will it take Adam to get to the other side? So another tricky question. What's tricky about part C and part D is just realizing that you're not really going to be working with this triangle. All you have to work with is this right angle triangle here if you draw a dotted line. So here's what I mean by that for part D. Adam is swimming this way. So he starts here and then he gets to the other side of the river. Well, we know this is 15 degrees with the shore. And then we know that the river is one kilometer wide. So this distance here is one kilometer. So if the river is one kilometer wide, notice that we can solve the distance that Adam swims, because he's swimming along this line here, along that resultant line. So once we figure out what that distance is, Time is just what? Distance over speed. And we already know what the speed Adam is swimming at along that line is that resultant speed of 5.4 kilometers per hour, which we were given in the question. So we just got to find the distance. And remember, this is a distance triangle. This here is a velocity triangle. So you can't be combining, like you can't put this one here in this triangle because this triangle only has speeds. This triangle has distances. So to solve for this distance, notice that's the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. We got the opposite side, so we can use sine. So sine 15 equals opposite over hypotenuse. And when we isolate for that distance, it's basically one divided by sine of and when you solve for that distance, you end up getting 3.86 kilometers. So the distance that Adam swims, 3.86 kilometers. And then um, the speed at which he's swimming at, 5.4 kilometers per hour. 
So 3.86 divided by 5.4, you would end up getting 0.715. And notice that this is in hours here, right? Because we got the speed as kilometers per hour. But notice in the question, they're asking how long in minutes will it take Adam to get to the other side? So to get the number of minutes, you simply what? You take 0.715 hours, and then you multiply it by 60 minutes per one hour. And when you multiply those, you'd end up getting approximately 43 minutes. So that there is your final answer to part D. It takes Adam 43 minutes to get to the other side. And when you're solving for how long it takes a swimmer to get to the other side, remember, they're gonna be swimming along that same resultant line. Even though they started swimming here because there's a current, it took them over here. So you always have to find the distance along that line. And then to get the time, you take the distance along that same line divided by the speed and you end up getting your time. And then part C and part D, in my opinion, were pretty tricky because you weren't using that same triangle. You had to create a new one by creating a vertical line down when you were solving for that downstream distance and that time.